speaking a foreign language is in many res respects taking on a different identity in a way. You're a bit of a different person when you're speaking a different language. It never got boring. I never felt like I had learned enough. There was always more and more to discover. So that's why I thought that I definitely needed to keep going French at university. I went on um, the French exchanges and the German exchanges and that really showed me how useful this, this subject or these subjects were. Um, and I thought I wanted to take that to another level. I guess languages um, have always been of interest to me because I just love speaking them. Um, your brain has to work very, very quickly in order to translate sentences and deliver them and remember rules. Um, and I get a real buzz from doing that. Students can do either one language on its own or they can do two languages together with a range of languages you can do from scratch or they can do a language in combination with another subject. I knew I wanted to do French because I knew French already, but when I looked at the um, Oxford University website and I saw that I could learn a new language, I thought that that's an occasion that you have to catch early on because you never know when you're going to be able to do that again. The first year is pretty prescribed as to what you do and our reasoning for that is that we want to give you exposure to lots of new things that you won't have encountered before. The great thing with modern languages is that if you're bored of reading books, still watching a video in the language is still technically studying. You could say that modern languages is doing lots of subjects all at once, because inevitably you're doing specific language skills, but you're also then doing aspects of literature, history, potentially an element of philosophy, even a bit of art history. A lot of courses will do your translation language work. Um, almost everywhere has the year abroad, but Oxford puts a lot of emphasis on your literature. Literature, I think people can see that as being, so does that just mean close reading of texts then? That might relate more to the experience that they've had of studying literature at school or college. And it's much more using literature as a jumping off point for looking at matters of intellectual history, cultural interest, etc. If you don't study the literature in a language, you can get to know the language completely, you can get to learn the whole culture, the whole traditions and the society of that country. You will be doing close reading, but you'll also be bouncing off in all sorts of different directions. You have to do a period of literature, um, be that modern, early modern or medieval, but you get to choose which one you do, and that's per language. At the moment I'm specialising a lot in medieval stuff, which is great. Um, it's definitely my favourite part of the course is the medieval French. When I turned up I'd never have thought that I would go into looking at texts from the 12th, 13th century in France and Germany and reading those texts in the original language. It enables you to be a complete unapologetic geek for language. So in other words, you're somebody who's really interested in how language works, what words do, what happens in translation, different sorts of communication. In terms of the year abroad, everything is open, really. Um, it's up to you what you do. I'll be heading to um, Ch the Champagne region of France, a place called Orvance, um, to be teaching. Um. I did nine months in Germany and three months in France, and there are other people who did six months, six months. Quite a few of my friends are doing their own internships. They're working in banks, in publishing houses. The best facilities have got to be the libraries, I think, and the fact that every college has its own library and every faculty has its own library. There's the Modern Languages Faculty Library, which is an undergraduate lending library, and then there's the Taylor Institution Library, which is a whole research library that undergraduate students are equally welcome to use, and is also a really nice space to work. The online system for searching for the books that you need is, is very, very good these days, so you can make a list at home of everything you need to get, and then know exactly where you're going in the library. The Language Centre offers 100 or hundreds of possible languages and it's got resources specifically for modern languages students. The best resources are your tutors um, who you can go to with any issues you've got, mainly academic but also outside of, of academia and the tutorial system where you have that intense period of time with an expert in what it is you're studying um, is invaluable. They really take seriously your point of view. They're happy to discuss their point of views with you. 
Um, so that was a really nice surprise. You really do feel properly part of an intellectual community. It really is a great opportunity. You get to deliver your essay, they give you feedback um, and you can quiz them and you can work out things you don't understand um, and occasionally you might just put a point to them that they haven't heard before. You really get sparking with students and exploring their thoughts and their ideas, introducing them to things they've not thought about before, seeing how they respond to that, um, seeing what their fresh perspectives are which can often make me think differently about subjects that I think I know well. It feels ever so slightly awkward because you're either just on your own, um, which happened quite a lot, or with one other person, with this expert sitting across from you, and there's nowhere to hide. So if you haven't done your work for the week, then you're not going to be able to hide behind the rest of the class, for example. I spend much of my time reading, and that's probably where the majority of my time goes reading, because you can't um, really write the essays that you're given without having a, a firm basis of of knowledge of the subject and you need to be able to read around it too. The essay writing is very tiring, it's very hard, you will never, you never get it completely right, but it's great because it pushes you to make your point, argue it, defend it. I just used to think of Oxford like the brand of my English dictionary or something, um, but when I decided the subject I want to study then I started researching the best university where to do that and Oxford was obviously among them. I think when students are applying for modern languages, they can sometimes feel quite anxious that they already need to have a lot of experience of travelling into the countries where that language is spoken, to doing work experience, um, to have read a lot of literature, and they really don't. I think if you're going to apply for languages, you need to try some reading um, in those languages and don't be put off if it seems difficult, because of course it's going to be difficult, you're reading um, in, a, in another language and just try and keep going, so don't check every other word. What we're looking for is that people have made the most of the opportunities that they've had, whatever that opportunity is. It's more what your innate capabilities are, whether they think they can take out of you what you've got in you. As is always the case, it's difficult to generalise about exactly what will happen in an interview, but typically it's going to have a few parts to it. Um, we may well ask you to look at a text, to look at a text beforehand. That could be in English or it could be in one of the languages, a language that you're going to study. I had one interview for both French and German. Um, I didn't speak any French or German in the interview and I was given a poem in English beforehand. But that really shows you that they're emphasising the, the literature element of the course and they want to see if you can cope with the literature. We'll want to know about how you've developed your interests in the language. So have you been watching any films? Have you been reading any books? Um, and what have you got out of it? That's always the crucial thing is, so what did you think of that? They generally want to know what is your point of view, how you think, why do you want to do something? And I said, I don't know anything about Portuguese and I want to learn it and that's why I'm here. There is likely to be a section that's in the target language but we'll be very careful in that section as to what we ask you because we obviously don't want you to end up in difficulties vocabulary wise and at that point we're not looking for fluency. I know it sounds cliched but you have to be passionate about languages, you genuinely have to be committed to your subject. We know the sort of level that you're likely to be at with your language ability so we're looking for the fact that your grammatical bases are secure and that you're willing to have a go, so you don't feel that you have to give the shortest answer possible to avoid making mistakes. It was just a surreal experience, because to be completely honest, I came out of my German interview thinking, well, nice try, but never mind then. Um, so I wasn't expecting, I genu genuinely wasn't expecting to get um, an acceptance letter, but it was, it was a great feeling, um, and it took a long time for it to sink in. Take yourself seriously as an intellectual being, because we're taking you seriously as an intellectual being. In terms of what students go on to do after a modern languages degree, in some respects it's quite difficult to pin it down because they go on to do everything. Um, they come out of their degree particularly as very well skilled communicators. I haven't decided yet, but I hope to start off with a big firm, find my role in society in the world, 
and then who knows. A lot of students are also, because of their experience of different cultures, very outward looking and often very interested in third sector careers. When I finished this course, um, I'd really like to go into journalism. It's a career that's interested me from, from a very young age. I'm now going into teaching. Um, I've got a PGC course to go to in York in September. Um, and that's a year long and then after that, if there's anyone who will take me, then I'll be working as a teacher. It's also going to make you just extremely employable. When lists come out of you know, most employable graduates, modern languages is always there in the top ten, um, sometimes in the top three. Um, so whilst there may not be any obvious answer if someone's asking you, but what is this degree going to lead you on to do? You can just say with great confidence and proven certainty, it's going to make me really attractive to employers in the future. You, you come here because you love your subject, so you have to work out, work hard for it, and that's obviously challenging, but you are challenged in, a, in something you've chosen to be challenging, so I find that hard, but really enjoyable. <laughs>